So yeah, nobody else wanted to come see this with me. Well, okay, to be fair, Savannah didn't want to be here, Sarah didn't want to be here, but they both would have come, but they're both busy. So I'm stuck watching, well, I won't even say stuck, but I gotta watch a Tom Cruise movie by myself. So yeah, if the video title didn't give it away, I am watching and reviewing Solo this time, uh, The Mummy, starring Tom Cruise, directed by somebody in... And Chris McQuarrie did some rewrites on it, so I'm happy for the Tom Cruise aspect, the Christopher McQuarrie aspect, Sophia Botella. I'm gonna feel uh, no, I butchered that, but um, the katana legged lady from Kingsman, um, and the fact that Russell Crowe is Dr. Jekyll, like. All those elements, I'm just like, this sounds like delightful trash. So hopefully I get a good movie out of this or something that I can at least enjoy. I mean, out of the two Tom Cruise movies that are coming out this year, I'm definitely looking forward to American Made more than I am to this one. But um, I've, so, I might have explained this before on, on this show, but when it comes to movie trailers, I tend to watch, if it's something I'm interested in, I tend to watch the first trailer that's put out. So it's like, oh cool, this is how it's gonna look and everything. And then if I'm sold on that, I will not watch any other trailers. And the Mummy trailer, I'm like, ah, oh, this uh, this seems like it'd be plenty of fun. I'm, I'm good, I don't need to look up any more trailers. Um, which I think was actually pretty brilliant for a first trailer, because if you've seen it before, all it is, is, well, or, or vast majority of it, is one sequence of the film. And what it looks like is Tom Cruise and company look like there's some kind of military squad sent in to grab a sarcophagus for whatever reason. And, you know, mid-flight, they're attacked by a bunch of birds in a very supernatural way, and the plane crashes, and everybody's dead except Tom Cruise. And the way that is constructed and told just within a trailer is pretty efficient storytelling while also just showing you one scene of the movie, pretty much. And I'm like, okay, that is actually really good marketing, and I wish that were carried over in a lot more movies. I mean, it does have a flash of like, it, it does do the pretty typical Hollywood trailer thing of like a uh, 45 second flash of a whole bunch of different action beats. But for the most part, it is just that one sequence, which I find really cool. So I'm kind of hoping that transfers over to the movie itself. Um, not as excited when I found out that that Universal is trying to continue like their dark universe. So they put out they put out Dracula Untold and they said that was the start of it. But from what I've been hearing more recently, they're like, nah, this is the start of it. So I don't know what to think of that. I'm like, uh I would I would like for there to be a nice middle ground when it comes to that. Not everything needs to have a connected universe. But if you want to reinvigorate the Universal Monster movies, it would be a lot of fun if maybe there were a light amount of carryover between some of the characters or if it or if it was hey, we see that guy continuously. Like if if Dr. Jekyll for instance were there medical doctor and he just happens to treat Dr. Jekyll like how Rosario Dawson is treated in the Marvel Netflix shows where it's like yeah there's that character that appears and it's like oh that's really cool to see them but leave it at that keep it all more low-key I would like I would like if that were the case but I don't see it being the case but um yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I know nobody else wanted to watch this but crazy old Carson who really likes Tom Cruise action movies. 
But uh, you know what? Screw the haters. It's going to be you and me. I'm going to go watch it. I'm going to tell you what I thought about it. You have no idea what you have unleashed. What the hell? You are alive because you were cursed by the ultimate evil. So I forgot the fact that Alex Kurtzman was directing this film. Some of you, that might be like, oh, that's the review, that's it right there, but I would not be doing my job if I did not explain why that would have impacted my attitude going into the film. It was not very well made. It was a lot of sound and fury for nothing, for no real payoff. It was pretty sloppily put together. The acting was weird and all over the place. Like the, like the actors were not given proper direction. There were plot elements that were handed out and then immediately rescinded only to be handed out when the movie needed them to be. And the end of the film, much like Dracula Untold, made me go, okay, well, then I didn't want to watch this movie. I want to watch the sequel. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll explain. So the film has like three starts. Like right off the bat, that's not a good sign. But it, the, at first you get like 45 seconds of some... Uh, actually, I take that back. The first thing you see is a quote. And then like a minute and a half later, you get part of that quote again. But so you get... It starts with... It starts with um, a Templar burial in England. And then it goes to... Ex like, a way too long explanation that they are building more public transit in London and came across this tomb. And then Russell Crowe enters and he's like, Oh, interesting. Gives you part of the quote. And then we start the movie again, this time with Jake Johnson and Tom Cruise. And, like, right off the bat, they make Tom Cruise incredibly unlikable, but I get the feeling that the writers and the director were like, oh, he's just a charming rogue. No, he cons his friend and, like, brother-in-arms into helping him uh, essentially pull a raid on some insurgents of some sort in Iraq. And because there could be treasure down there. He has a, he has a um, lead that there's some treasure down there. And to con his friend, Jake Johnson, into doing this with him, he just, like, stabs his bag of water and is like, you're not going to get any more water. It's, like, 100 miles from here, but there's some water down there. It's like, wow, way to endear your character to me immediately. Because it'd be it'd be one thing if it was played off as like selfish and kind of a fun asshole maneuver, but it was played very uneven, and I'm just like, this guy's a dick. This is our hero for the movie. Like, there's a way to play it right, but it wasn't. And then the movie just goes further downhill from there. Like, easily the best part of the film was the was the plane crash sequence. It was very well constructed. It, it had more elements to it than just what the trailer gave you. Uh, I mean, of course, I guess that sounds kind of stupid. But the way it was built up, well, the way part of it was built up, and then its payoff actually worked because it was a uh, because of how the film constructed it. Now, like. I'm going to say slight spoiler, but this all, this also happens in like the first 15, 20 minutes of the film. Like this is well within act one. Um, so Jake Johnson's character dies. Uh, they, when they're bringing out the tomb of the, of, uh, Sophia Batala, um, her, the mummy, um, 
he is bitten by a spider and is kind of turned into... If you ever watched the Steven Summers mummy from 99, the guys who are like, Emotep. He's kind of turned into one of those. Kind of zombie-ish, but not quite. Um, he kills, he stabs one guy, and then Tom Cruise has to put him down. Kills him. And that happens right before, like, the plane starts getting torn apart and everything. And it's like, okay, this is actually con being constructed very well. But then they introduce an element from American Werewolf in London, where at times Jake Johnson will be all like, he, you'll see him, like, uh, uh, deteriorating. And he'll be trying to trying to get Tom Cruise to talk to him. He's like, hey, I have to talk to you. Come, come on. And it's like, okay, I see what you're doing there. And then you dropped it for like 40 minutes. And then you picked it up and then you dropped it for the rest of the movie. And it's like, I feel like that could have been played very well. And then the, the, way, the, the, the way that Tom Cruise is directed in this film is really bad because you get the feeling that you get the feeling that he or, or you definitely see that he's in way over his head but he's never allowed to play it quite right he's never at he's never allowed to ask the questions that the audience would ask and because of that you're left and, and the way it's delivered is like, he'll maybe start to ask a question and someone will interrupt him and be like, you just don't understand. It's like, let me understand. To, to quote L Rick and Morty, let me get to know ya. Let me, let me understand this. Let him ask a question for the audience. He doesn't know, the audience doesn't know, we would both like to know, please. And because of that, it's a complete stumbling block for Universal's dark universe. Because it wasn't even subtle. It was Universal logo. We flip around to the other side of the earth and it says Dark Universe. And, and so it's like, all right, I guess this is how we're starting it. And it just, it was not played well. The execution was bad. And there are, there are elements that you see in the trailer that are like, Okay, but that could possibly be a cool action scene, right? Like the sandstorm in the middle of uh, in the middle of London. That was cool for about five seconds, and then that was done. Like that's the most thrilling part, apart from the plane crash, which again, great part of the trailer. Apparently, the only worthwhile part of the movie. Apart from that, there's really no cool parts them to the film there was there was no moment where I'm like man I'm really glad I'm sitting here watching this happen it was just kind of boring it wasn't I was I was kind of bored the whole time there was no there was no real climax to the film they they really made you feel like this was an action film there was no real sense of adventure like the 99 Steven Summers version. And the the rules of the film that I, I I have to keep going back to it because this was done like what like almost 10 years ago and it was perfect. The Steven Summers version immediately went, okay, they break into this guy's tomb. We understand why he was killed. We, we do understand why Sofia Batala was killed. We understand why uh, Emotep was killed. We understand what he wants and why he can't have it. And we understand that the, the group of adventurers took his jars and he needs those back to be able to complete his ritual. Okay, we understand where this plot's gonna go. We understand the end goal of the villain and how we're gonna get there. We kind, it takes like an hour, hour plus to understand what this mummy's goal is and how she needs to achieve it. And it plods to that point. It's poorly paced. And as I said, the the acting is all over the map. Like, sorry, very, very poorly directed acting. And not only that, but the character relationship, the, the love interest, Tom Cruise and his love interest in this film are... It, 
it's very lazy the way their relationship is put together because you're almost dropped into what would be considered like end of second act romantic comedy uh, we have to break these characters up now point. That's how we're dropped into their relationship. So we never really get that sense of, oh, they actually care about each other. We understand why Tom Cruise wants to protect her. We understand why she cares about him. And through, even though he's a very selfish guy, why she believes he's still, you know, could be a hero, could be someone worth going up to bat for. And we're given, we're, none of that is presented at all. Whereas Brendan Fraser, it's like, oh, he's a, he's a scoundrel. He's a, you know, he's an adventurer and he ultimately does want to do good, but he was kind of given, uh, he was kind of left to the wolves when we first meet him. His whole battalion pretty much abandoned him in the film and he was just caught wandering the desert. And so he's just, he's this guy who understands what it takes to survive in the desert. Whereas Rachel White, Weiss is, she understands the culture, the archaeology and everything, but she doesn't understand how to survive out there. So that's why they need each other. She understands how it works. He under, she understands how the curse and how the language works. He understands what it takes to survive and he's going to protect her. And you understand their mutual attraction to each other through the movie. And it's got great banter. The actors pull it off well. Basically, what this review comes down to, skip this film. Just go watch the Steven Summers 99 Mummy. That movie is amazing. And watch the sequel to it. The sequel's also a lot of fun. Hell, watch The Scorpion King. Just don't watch this. This is... It's boring. It's a bland action film. The, by the end of it, I was wondering what the point of these two hours... What was the point of these two hours? It was just... It was not thrilling. It was not a fun adventure film. There's barely any action in it. So at the end of the day, I gotta go, what is the point? Why did I watch it? There is, well, I watched it because I like to go see all the movies and review them for you. So I can tell you, don't watch this film. Please, please go spend your money on some, Wonder Woman is still in cinemas. Holy crap, it's been a week since I watched Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman is still in cinemas. Go watch that instead. I have heard very good things about It Comes a Night. I'm going to go watch it on Saturday myself, along with Sarah. I hope that's better. My, generally speaking, it's been getting a lot better reviews, a lot better buzz. Go watch that instead. Don't, don't go spend your money on this. And this, this is coming from a guy who genuinely enjoys a lot of Tom Cruise action films. This is just... It's one unfortunate mess, and I wish they put it back in the sarcophagus and bury it for another 5,000 years. So, with all that being said, please stick around on sometime on Saturday. I will be watching and posting the review for It Comes at Night. Um, please stay tuned for that. If you like this video, if you like what I had to say about this movie, please like and subscribe. If you want to talk about it, maybe you actually liked it. I would like to hear your thoughts on that. Please, please comment below. I'd, I'd really like some interaction. Um, as I said, please like and subscribe. YouTube.com slash Glass Films House. Facebook.com slash Glass House Films. And Twitter at Glass House Films. So until next time, when Sarah and I review It Comes at Night, catch y'all later.